Hello and come on in for a pint at the Blue Boar Tavern. Well, a symbolic one at any rate. The Shakespeare Oxford Fellowship is about to launch a terrific new discussion on the authorship issue in a very free flowing, is that the right phrase? Environment. We have created the Blue Boar Tavern where Oxfordians will meet and greet each other via Zoom and talk about their favorite subject. However, once the show launches, you will need to be a member of SOF to walk through the swinging doors. Membership is ridiculously cheap, less than $44 a year, less than $1 a week, supporting all our researchers, publications, social media outreach, our website, our podcast series, Don't Quill the Messenger, and this series. What we were going to do now is talk to the developer of the series, Ben August, a member of the Board of Trustees and a longtime Oxfordian. Then you will see a clip from a recent rehearsal of the Blue Boar Tavern show. Then I will come back to encourage you to do what you know is in your heart, become a member. The first episode will drop on March 17, but remember it is available to members only. So Ben, welcome. Why don't you give us some background on the show? Thank you, Bob. Um, well, let's see. The Blue Board Tavern, I guess uh, you, you introduced me as the developer of it. Uh, I'll go with that. I'm not quite <laughs> sure. With but, um, you know, it's something that a few of us dreamed up on the uh, uh, fundraising and membership committee. And I think the, uh, the, the goal of it is really to give our members a way of, uh, you know, a different format for seeing a conversation between, I would say, very knowledgeable Oxfordians and Oxfordians with great personalities and, and depth of uh, experience uh, talking about various subjects around Shakespeare and, and being an Oxfordian that I think are very interesting. And, and the format is different in, in that, you know, we, we often present our, our research in a lecture format, and this is purely intended to be an informal conversation that is uh, filled with humor, lots of fun, and, and very interesting. And you know how in conversation, a lot of times, bright people bring up things that they're thinking of in real time and they're thinking of maybe even for the first time. And I would say, uh, I would look forward to some of those kinds of little discoveries and, and you know, examples. So um, this will be a monthly presentation? Yes, we're going to do it once a month. Um, it may not be on the same time every month because it's got to fit various people's schedules. Right. But um, our, our goal is to do one event a month live, which is sort of interesting too, because uh, I, I've, to me, being live is sort of scary if it's actually being broadcast live because, you know, I'm sure you know, live TV, things happen sometimes. We may end up uh, doing a live performance once a month and then cleaning it up a little bit with editing and putting it into some kind of library, video library for the future. Oh, cool. But at least if you watch the live event, you may see some things that uh, are particularly unique or funny or accidental. Who knows? What's the origin of the name Blue Boar Tavern? Well, you're probably as, as good at explaining that as I am, Bob. Um, I mean, Boar, of course, is part of the Oxfordian uh, symbolic, you know, her heraldry, I guess. Uh, it was on his coat of arms, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Uh, it was a blue boar. Um, uh, but it was something that I think, uh, I, I guess I don't want to uh, give the wrong person the attribution for that, but uh, it was uh, invented by one of our members. Excellent. Um, and did the Blue Boar Tavern, do you know, did it actually exist? I don't know that, but I think it does. Okay. But I don't um, know that. 
so will your cast of characters rotate um, or will the people we're about to see um, come back uh, for every occasion? So first of all, uh, this is you know, being decided in real time. And we're, we're inventing this as we go. There's not some master plan. Um, uh, right now, the intention is to have a, a core cast and uh, we'll run with that and sort of establish the mood, the tone, the flow. You know, there are things to learn as you develop these live conversations on Zoom. It's not exactly like having a conversation live face to face. So you have to learn some cues and how things flow. Um, and I think we've chosen as a core cast some very interesting folks with great senses of humor and so on. Um, but I think as we go into more programs and start getting into some specialized topics, there will be people who we absolutely want to bring in because they're, you know, experts on a certain subject. And every, every event will have sort of a focal point, you know, a, a, a general topic of discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll, we'll be bringing people in for sure as guests. Now those guests, just like in uh, these uh, TV shows that you see, you know, I guess they're called serials. Um, sometimes a guest comes on, you know, Buddy Harrelson, <laughs> or somebody else, and he does so well, it's like there's a great demand for that person. So yeah. those kinds of things may happen. And of course, there'll be some people on the core cast who can't make it every month or, or traveling. And so, you know, again, it, we'll, we're making this up as we go, which is part of the fun. It's, it really sounds great. Um, so will there be a focus? Will William be present? Do you think he's going to come in the uh, drop into the blue bore and, and ask for a pint? I assume he okay. that there, there is a rumor circulating that uh, he may show up every now and then. That's great. <laughs> I've, I've always wanted to meet him. I, I, I have a, my first job after uh, I retired. Well, my first volunteer position was in uh, tutoring people who didn't speak English very well. Um, and so I probably have a lot of experience in dealing with people like William. Um, uh, what about um, issues that are um, uh, rarefied? Were you going to do any special interest to um, uh, not dumb it down, but, but to help people understand the history of the time, uh, the uh, uh, soldier, social or political relevance of uh, Elizabethan England? Well, okay, so... Again, these are these are the kinds of things that may evolve. We'll go down these little channels, um, and part of this is we want our members to contribute ideas, contribute topics. Ah. Um, what I would say is the first few, again, to set the tone and get everybody familiar with it, and and get our our cast familiar with the flow and everybody's um, personalities and so on. I think once we get that started, I would be very surprised if we don't start getting very good suggestions from our audience. I bet you our, will. So then it'll be a matter of trying to select, you know, what's coming in and what what is most uh, going to be most entertaining and appropriate and, and informative. Like for instance, we have the first folio anniversary coming up, four hundred year anniversary. So right. You know, that kind of topic is going to be, uh, I'm sure, in demand. So, and then we'll bring in guests that will help us to flesh out information along, you know, that, that topic. Okay, that all sounds great. All right. Um, so I think the key thing is for you to rehearse your cast and for those who want to watch more of this to uh, stick around for a few minutes where we are going to uh, run a clip from a recent rehearsal. Um, and uh, uh, then after that, um, I'm going to come back and urge you to do what you know is in your heart, which is to become a member. Uh, before we go to um, the clip, remember that the first episode drops on, uh, well, actually, if you're doing it live, it is 
aired on uh, March <laughs> March 17th. Um, ben, any final thoughts uh, before we go to the uh, rehearsal? No, just one thing I will say, um, these uh, events are unplanned, unscripted. So ah. we have had one, what we called a dress rehearsal. And even that we went into without, with very little preparation. We knew what the topic was gonna be. So I, I want everybody to understand this is truly a live event uh, that where people are, are thinking and expressing themselves in real time, which makes it more exciting in, in my view. Yeah, I'm really looking forward, uh, forward to it. I, I saw the, uh, the rehearsal, um, I, which means I saw the clip that we're about to screen. Um, and I thought it was just terrific. Um, so for those of you who are members and those of you who are about to become members, what will happen is uh, prior to the uh, airing of the live show on March 17, you'll be sent a special link, not available on YouTube, not available at your corner uh, grocery store, but only to members. Um, and that will give you access to this. So um, Ben, thank you very much. Um, let's go to the clip now and I will come back in a moment. Um, and uh, I guess one says break a leg. I'll say it, break a leg. All right, let's go to the clip. Ben, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Earl. Great to see you. Uh, it's been a little while, but um, I sure would like uh, a pint of the Blue Boar Extra Special Bitters, <laughs> sir. All sir. right. I think Rick's going to be here in a little bit. Oh, there he comes. Hey there, guys. Hey, John. Hey, Harold, how are you? Hey, it looks like Hank. Hey. Hey, Hank. Hey. Howdy, Hello. Hank. How are you? Yeah. But didn't they, didn't they teach all that at the, the grammar school in Stratford? <laughs> they wish. They wish. <laughs> to mention the musical content and, 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 and in terms of the Renaissance thing, Oxford in the 1580s had two acting companies, the boys and the men's acting company who were touring or performing at court. He also had a company of musicians that, that he supported and he had a company of tumblers. So talk about, I mean, this is like comedia, you know, stuff being put together. And if you look at, if you look at the translation projects that were going on around places like Gray's Inn and other places that, where there was a huge amount of classical literature being translated in Renaissance literature, being translated into English or Latin, the Earl of Oxford and the Earl of Leicester and William Cecil and Queen Elizabeth were the four primary patrons of those translation projects. So in oh. terms of the sources of the English Renaissance, in terms of the literary re re renewal of those classical sources, Oxford was right in the mix among them, those who were who are most proponent of that. One, one thing you brought up there, Hank, just I, I really literally have this by coincidence right here. I read it behind the bar here. Yes, you do. Will you I just happen to have this. Oh, it, it's a green book, so it looks weird. But it's a textbook I, I had back in college of drama of the English Renaissance, volume one, the Tudor period. And then I, I just hadn't read some of these in decades, so just genuinely coincidentally i've been reading through starting at the early renaissance plays and you're right hank is the ones from that would have been from edward de vere's childhood they're practically like still medieval mystery plays in a lot of ways yeah and that's within his lifetime it went from that to you know volume two and you can just see it developing here yeah, yeah. And i think part of it is is the fun and the laughter you know that's why we have Shakespearean comedy, I think. Oxford was so smart and so well read that he felt able at the same time to get a great kick out of all these things. Well, after all, what's life? It's not just in the brain. He understood it from all the different aspects. All terrific. Thanks to Ben and all the actors, tavern keeper Jonathan Dixon, Rick Wagaman, Earl Showerman, Hank Whittemore, and Bonner Miller-Cutting. So if you are a member, 
please make sure you have renewed for this year. And if you are an Oxfordian or an authorship skeptic, but in either case have not joined, please become a member. Membership is our principal source of unrestricted revenue and supports everything we do. The first episode drops on March 17. It's for members only, and we will see you then.